Right guys, it's Sound Crank. Time to lift the veil and stop being so elusive on what the hell I'm actually doing here that I'm ranting and raving about. So as we can see, I've got my two tracks. They're identical, with that one For difference. Real, no, Soundcrank made now this. it's time to see the difference. Yeah. So all I need to do is just show you this. So we're going to go from here, right at the beat tag, yeah? For real though, Soundcrank made this. And just so that for one last time for clarity, they are audibly the same. For real though, Soundcrank made this. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you that they're not. This one here, this is the raw. This one's got no additional stuff. It is as you hear it. Whereas this version here, I've got some little hidden trick going on to add a next, a next level of protection against me for the upcoming Beat Thief. And we all know they exist. So let's have a look. We're going to go make sure that these are both attached to our... Nah, it doesn't matter. All we need is the master channel. So master channel, slot one, wave candy. Just so you can see what I'm doing. Let's make this bigger. It's on spectrum and play. For real though, Soundcrank made this. So this is what our wave looks like. You can see it. It looks like a normal spectrum wave. Whereas if I switch to this one, and we check the same area of music... For real though, Soundcrank made this. Oh, why you steal my beat, bro? Huh? That shit just blow your mind? It should have. Because that right there, that is some amazing, amazing security for you guys as producers out there. And I am going to show you how it's done. So, first things first, let's just get... Let's scrap all this and start again. So, what we need to do first is get rid of our DAW. We don't need our DAW for this first se first section. We need to go here. BAM! Microsoft Paint! Believe it or not, this is what we need. Microsoft Paint. So open that up. Now, I've set my size here in pixels to 516 by 516. Uh, and that is just to match the Spectrum Analyzer uh, inside FL Studio. It has 516 vertical uh, vertices to work from so uh, I may as well just leave it like that so we've got a pixel for each vertices and that helps it be a bit more accurate so uh, if you haven't done anything like this before if what we're doing we're taking an image and we're going to convert an image to audio and if you've never done this before the to save a lot of hassle the, the quick outline that you need to always remember is that black equals silence and white equals the presence of harmonics so that being said this is a silent tag or as close to a silent tag as we can get otherwise known as a watermark so black background white text and you can put anything you want in here you know you can put your name like uh, no, I could do. I could just sound crank. Says by this beat. Yeah, I could say that. I need to make it a bit smaller though, so it fits on that one line. Yeah, there we go. Sound crank says by this beat. Uh, so that'll do. That'll do. I'm happy with that. So we'll save that. We want to make sure that we're saving it as a JPEG. It won't work otherwise, and we'll just call this one three. So, we, we're done here. We don't need this. Now it's time for our DAW. So in here, what we need is Harmer. We'll replace this. Get a little bit of Harmer on the go. Now, don't worry. You can do this on other, on other DAWs. Harmer's not the only thing in the world that can do this. But Harmer's the only thing in the world that I have that can do this, so I'm using Harmer. So first things first, we get our audio spectrum out here so we can see. If you've never used a spectrum analyzer before, just to give you a quick brief breakdown. These bars here represent harmonics. This bottom one is the literal note I'm playing, so that would be my ground note, which is an E. And the rest of this is the harmonics of that E. Yeah. So I want to make this work here by an image, the image we just created. So we go presets, down to template, 
and we want this one here, resynthesis. So we hit that, and that's fine. So, and then before we load in our image, we want to set a couple things up first. So we want this, make sure the frequency is set to linear, we want in, not in octaves, we want it in hertz, and the pitch, we want the pitch, uh, the pitch denominate, uh, denominator to be four, which will help the separated guides of this. You'll see what I mean in a moment. It also decreases the pitch. Yeah. So now it's time for our image. So we want to load our image into this box. You can drag and drop, or you can hit this arrow and go open image file. And we just pick the one we just made. Sound crank says buy this beat. That sounds about right to me. So this time here, we'll see this red line. What this red line does, it's this just tells Harmer where you want the waveform of the image to start f movement from. And we, want to, we want it just right at the start, so just a wee bit before. And you want to crank the speed up, the find speed, and the course speed uh, a wee bit. And that'll help cycle through this nice and quickly. If we move the... I don't want to show you too much. But if you do this, you see it's moving. it's moving pretty fast. As if we bring it all the way down, it moves really slow. So we want it quite quick because we want this to we want this to be yeah, there we go, that'll do. So let's put this back to the start and you just want to start playing from high notes, work your way down until you can see something here. Oh oh here we go. So maybe one more. Sound crank says by this beat. Just like that. We have converted text on an image to audio. Now, I did say that this was a silent tag. It's it's not, let's be honest, but it's pretty damn close. You know, if you can hear that, you've either got some serious, a serious set of speakers on you, or your ears are just flawless and you've never cranked your speakers up loud enough in your life. But, we can combat this for those with better sound systems or a very well trained ear. So all we need to do is we just load it into our mixer as you'd expect. Ba -ba -ba. So it's in channel one. We want to just knock that all the way right down to about here. And then we want to make sure we've got our beat. So I'll go to my beats. Which one will I use? Eh. I'll go with this one. Yeah, this one will do. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, yep. And if I get my pattern one... I just need to make sure that... I have a note for it. Put it there. Now, can you hear that? Can you hear any no anything different? What the fuck is this playing twice for? I know why. Pattern one, you bastard. Excuse my colossal fuck up, I'll do it in pattern two. Because apparently, I clicked on some. I've still got that fucking highlighted. Fuck FL. What are you doing? Okay, manually. See, you can see it is actually playing a note. But it's just so high you can't hear it. And that's what we want. We'll just do that. There you go. I'll fucking shut you up. So yeah, I can't hear the difference there. But I can see one. We go wave candy. Bush. There it is. 
Soundcrank says buy this. So I've not I've not made it long enough, so I just go back to my piano roll. And we'll just stretch that note out a little bit. Say it about there. Maybe there. No, it needs to be longer. We'll go there. Perfect. If you can hear that, your ears are amazing. For real though, Soundcrank made this. So you just leave that hidden. You just leave that hidden there forever. Nobody will know a thing. You just get less, you drag it in. Bam, 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 bam. There you go, you've watermarked your entire track. Now, why is this useful, you ask? You might not ask. If, you, if you're not asking that, then I've made a good video and it's self-explanatory. However, if you do ask, you've got two, you, you have two versions here. So here's my version that's going, this right here, this is the version, this is on my beat store, this one right here. So if you're going to buy my beats from my store, you're going to get this version here. You've paid your money. So I don't need to tell you to buy my beat. Soundcrank made this. So when I upload this beat to YouTube and Spotify and SoundCloud, well not Spotify, but SoundCloud and all the other streaming services online, I upload this version that has the tag hidden in it. That way if anyone downloads it illegally and there's a dispute over this, who do you think is going to have the, who's going to be holding the boots in that situation? going to be me. All I need is a spectrum analyzer to prove if they paid for the beat or not. Because if you can see that text right there, it shows to me and everyone else that you've downloaded it illegally and not done so through my store. So what do you think? I hope this I hope this helps you guys. You know, there's you can do this on other DAWs, you can do it with other stuff. I have Harmer uh, so I need Harmer for this. Uh, it's the only it's the only VST synthesizer I've got that can do this. Uh, but there are others out there. I know you. I know it's possible in Ableton. I know it's possible elsewhere with third-party software and plugins. So yeah, look into it, guys. Producers especially, this is a great way to put an extra level of protection on your tracks. Obviously, it's not going to stop anyone stealing your beat. But at the end of the day. If they do, when they do, because we know they're going to do it, at least you've got something you can say, well, whoa, 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 hold on a second. You never paid for this, and I can prove it. Because it's easy to get rid of a vocal tag, and it's easy to bluff your way uh, into uh, to making it appear like you're legitimate and that you've paid for a beat. So this is a foolproof method, and the only people who would ever know are you or somebody with a £20,000 sound system sitting in a mastering studio in, a, in New York or somewhere, you know, with a huge budget, they're going to know, they're going to heed it. But the average person, no chance. And if you're listening to the track on uh, YouTube and all these other places, it's going to be compressed on top of that, so it's going to be even less audibly noticeable. But it will still be right here in this frequency range around the 20, just under, between 15 and 20k hertz. You want to aim to get it just about here, between 15 and 16k, so that a bounce down to MP3 doesn't remove it completely. If you've got it right up the top amongst your 20k, see I've got mine, mine peaks here at about 16.5k so that's fine you know, most mp3 will cut off just part of that you know so i'll be i'll be sitting at this so i could i could theoretically drop that down another semitone and i'll have it perfectly in the frequency spectrum so that it's not cut out from compression down to mp3 as well i hope this i hope this helps you out guys ultimately i just want to make sure everybody is secure in their beats and make sure that they've put up enough defences for themselves in the outcome of some foul play that you've got the most balls in your court to play with. Have fun guys and remember Soundcrank, Soundcrank, Soundcrank says by this beat peace. <laughs>